Hello everyone, it's time to show love to some of these laptops. These are three of the most promising looking candidates for resurrection from the Franklin EOS Hall. Got a Toshiba Satellite Pro down there, got a Dell Inspiron here, and an IBM ThinkPad. And I definitely have a lot more laptops than this to cover, but these three seem to be the most promising looking. So let's see what we can do to resurrect these. Alright, I'm going to start with the Toshiba Satellite, because if it's any good, it's getting sent to one of my patrons. You can see we're pretty scuffy on the top here. There's not much in the way of actual plastic damage except for these scratches here. And on the left side of the machine we have the CD-ROM drive which has unfortunately been defaced. I'm gonna have a time finding a replacement for that. Got the contrast control here, and this must be the battery release tab. And on the front side of the machine we have the speaker here, as well as the headphone jack and volume control. And on the right side of the machine we have the power button here. Got our microphone and line imports. We have two PCMCIA slots. Got a tiny little reset switch there. And I believe this port here is for an external floppy drive. And we've got our serial ports and the Kingston lock port. Now these ports normally have a cover over them. I do have the cover, but unfortunately it's in three separate pieces. So I'm gonna have to try to put it back together. And here's the back side of the machine. Now if you're unfamiliar with laptops from this time period, this might seem pretty strange to you. It actually takes mains voltage right on the laptop itself. There is no separate AC adapter for these. So if you're using one of these laptops, you have to be especially careful not to spill anything on it while it's sitting on your lap. Otherwise, you are definitely going to have a bad time. And we've got our combo PS2 keyboard and mouse port. Got our cooling fan here. Got our docking station port here. When you insert it into the docking station, it opens up these flaps and reveals the port. Pretty clever. And we've got our parallel port here, VGA port here, and an IRDA transceiver. IRDA was a form of wireless data transfer that used infrared light. You could use it to sync up a PDA or transfer files to or from a laptop. You could even use it to communicate with a printer. And here's the underside of the machine. You can see we have all four of our little rubber feet, although they are kind of petrified. At least they're there. Got a little scuff here, but I think that'll clean up. And here we have the drive lock latch. And this must be the latch that forces the drive out of its bay. That's kind of thin plastic. I'm kind of afraid to actually use it. But you know what? We're gonna do it for science. Just ever so carefully. Ah, there we go. I think we won. There we go. And we've got a manufacturer date of April 1997. And here's the interface. And this marking on the bottom side seems to suggest that it's a 10-speed drive. And this must be our RAM cover, so let's take a peek under there. And it is indeed a RAM expansion, though unfortunately it is missing. But it looks like we do have some onboard RAM, so that's good. This cover has just a little bit of rust underneath. Sure hope we don't have water damage in this thing. Let's just get that back on. Alright, let's get a look at that battery. It's gonna hit the release latch here, and it looks like I hold the latch while sliding the panel that way. Let's see how far that gets us. There we go. Now it looks like I just pull on this. Hopefully it's... Oh, it feels like it's spring-loaded. It's not just plastic tension. Let's lift up on this. And there it is. Looks like it's a lithium battery, so there's maybe a very slim chance that it still charges. We're gonna have to see. And it looks like the hard drive lives underneath the battery. So let's check that thing out. Looks like I just removed these two screws. And then we should slide this way. And there we go. That's interesting, it's got this vibration dampening schmoo here. It's actually still really pliable. All right, we got an 810 megabyte IBM drive, manufactured July 1996. It is, of course, an IDE drive. Let's just get that back in there. Let's go ahead and get the battery back in. And get it covered back up. And let's go ahead and get that CD drive back in there. Even though it's defaced, I want to see if it still works. It seems like that locking latch doesn't want to latch. Oh, there we go. It's really stuck. And here's a good shot of that label. Made in USA. Okay, I was just moving a laptop around and I heard something rattling around in there. Now, I didn't want to risk the plastic by taking off the back cover, but I gotta find out what's rattling in there. 
because it could be something conductive. And it looks like nine screws get us in. Actually, it looks like I'm gonna have to remove that hard drive as well. Okay, now for the terrifying part, releasing the plastic clips. If you hear a little girl scream, don't worry, it's just me. Okay, that's one down. Whew. That just made sound, it didn't actually break. And of course, part of the spudger broke off in there. Get out of there. All right, I'm back on the guitar pick. There we go. Why do they need a clip so close to the screw? Okay, well, I was able to open it up just enough to flush out what was rattling around in there. It was just this little bitty piece of plastic. So rather than risk breaking any plastic by continuing disassembly, I'm just gonna go ahead and put it back together. I don't see any signs of water damage on parts of the board that I can see, so I think it's fine. I did notice some fall damage on this corner though, unfortunately. Luckily, it's still structurally sound. All right, let's go ahead and open this thing up. Now this latch button is a little broken, but it does work. And as you can see, unfortunately, the LCD is cracked, so I'm gonna have to try to find a replacement for that. But we do still have the track point nub, although it's kind of smooth. It could definitely stand to be replaced. Mouse buttons are nice and clicky, and we can see it's badged as an Intel Pentium 1. And we are green. And we've got our internal microphone here. Okay, well, with no external power supply to test, we have to go straight for broke. And of course, since the LCD is cracked, I've connected an external monitor. All right, well, here comes power. Okay, well, we've got power and battery charge indicator lights. That's a good sign. Let's see what it does. Hard drive initialized. And it sounds like we're posting. And yes, we are, I got activity on the screen. But I wonder why the LCD didn't turn on. Maybe it's okay, there we go. Oh, that screen looks like how my heart feels right now. That thing is proper shattered. All right, well, let's switch back to the external monitor. And we've got complaints about a bad RTC battery. So I gotta figure out where that thing lives. It's definitely not in any readily accessible area. Let's just see if we can continue for now. Okay, so I'm guessing this is the BIOS setup. And it looks like we're good, so let's just save changes and exit. It's booting! Yeah, it's got Windows 95 on it. The hard drive sounds pretty healthy. Well, speaker works. That hard drive's just a going. And the track point works. Sweet. That's a giant mouse cursor. <laughs> Let's see what's going on with our disk space situation. A little over half full. All right, we got warranty coverage. Master disk creator. It's too bad I don't have a floppy drive. I haven't searched around to find a restore disk for this laptop yet. Yeah, it looks like it's got everything we would need. Okay, keep that in mind, because I'm probably gonna have to wipe this thing, because I think it has personal data on it. Let's see, at least it looks like it does. Oh, what is Voyeur? You know what, I don't even wanna know. What's an IMG? Oh, this must be the disk images for the that restore utility. Yeah, it sure is. Okay, maybe I won't have to transplant that hard drive. Sure hope these are in just regular old disk format. Looks like they are if the size is any indicator. All right, well, let's see if that CD drive works. Looks like this thing is more than just defaced. Got some broken plastic here. And that sticks out. It is spinning up though. And it went straight to AOL setup. All right, that CD drive works. And that's an especially good thing because I need to connect my zip drive to this thing in order to get those disk images off of here. Yeah, I could take the hard drive out and plug it into my IDE to USB adapter, but that's just boring. And zip disks are still my favorite period correct way of transferring large amounts of data from retro machines. And I've got the original iOmega install disk here. So let's go ahead and get that installed. All right, so now it's just a next, next finish adventure. I agree. I definitely read all that. And now we wait. See, allegedly we're charging the battery, so we'll see about that. The hard drive is working hard. All right, now it's time to shut down and connect our zip drive. Now let's go ahead and connect the zip drive to the parallel port. 
Uh-oh, it's time for Win 9 next to do a driver thing. All right, I think we won. And it detected our zip drive. Yes. Thank you, iOmega. So let's go ahead and get our zip disk in there. Oh, I love the way zip drives sound. And there it is. So let's go ahead and copy those disk images over. Let's just copy that whole folder. I'm pretty sure it's not bigger than 100 megabytes. Yep, we're good. Working hard, working hard. All right, we are done. <laughs> this is funny. Watch how violently these things eject disks. <laughs> they wanted to make sure that disk ejected. All right, let's see what this thing has for hardware. See, we've got eight megs of RAM. I wanna see what kind of sound card it has. And it's an ESS audio drive. I'm trying real hard not to fall in love with this thing. Let's see, display adapters, chips and technologies. Can't say I'm familiar with that one. And here's our IRDA transceiver. You can see they show up as a serial port. This thing has a SCSI controller? Oh, that's for the zip drive. All right, let's go ahead and drop down the DOS mode and do a surface scan of that hard drive. All right. All right, no file system problems. All right, proceed to surface scan. Oh, I think we're gonna make it. All right, got a clean bill of health on that hard drive. All right, let's go ahead and shut this thing down. All right, I've had this thing running for about an hour now. So let's see if that battery charged. Unplug power, let's see. Unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable. That battery took a charge. Yeah, and it's posting. Yeah, it's booting up. Let's see how long it runs. Those 90s lithium cells, man. Those things are the truth. Let's see, we've got a battery warning. Let's see how much charge it thinks it has. It thinks it has 58 minutes left. I don't know about that, but we'll see. I'm just gonna note the time and tool around a bit until it dies. Look at this, I'm playing Doom on battery power. That is amazing. Let's see what level I get to before it dies. I'm already on level two. All right, made it to level three. And actually, that little speaker in this thing doesn't sound half bad. Probably sounds terrible through the microphone, but in real life, it actually sounds pretty good. Okay, Doom just crashed, so I'm guessing we're getting pretty close to dying. Oh, okay, maybe it just got minimized. <laughs> Good old Windows 95. Level 4. Level 5. Yeah, I know, I should have run across that. Okay, sounds like I got a battery warning. Oh. Yep, I think we're done. Though not completely done, we just got kicked out from a warning. But I better not let it completely die. But that was 39 minutes of runtime. And that includes copying over Doom 1 from the zip drive. That is absolutely amazing. I didn't think this thing had any battery life at all, let alone decent battery life. I wonder what it would do from a full charge. Can't fall in love, I can't fall in love. I promised I'd sell it to my patron. Okay, next order of business is, I have to get that broken LCD out of there. I couldn't find any concrete information on what the part number is, just based on the laptop model, but I gotta take it out anyway in order to replace it, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, now I gotta get these little plastic stickers off, because there's screws behind them. This thing's already pretty warm from all that dooming, but I'm just gonna give it just a little bit of heat, just to soften the adhesive, and by little I mean very little heat. I have to excuse the noise from my hot air station, it takes it a minute to shut down. Now I'm just going to come in with an X-Acto knife blade, try to get under that sticker. Okay, I need a little bit more heat. Okay, well, got most of the adhesive. It is pretty brittle, it seems like. Well, the other side went better. Now, there are most likely screws behind these little rubber things also. So let's get those out of there. 
And yep, hidden screw. All right, got all the screws out, so now it's time for the terrifying part, releasing the clips. Okay, we got some movement there. Okay, that was a terrifying sound, but it was actually just releasing. Didn't break. Another one down. All right, we're making progress. At least these clips on top are easy. Let me change my angle up a little bit. No, lost part of my pick. There's more where that came from. All right. None of those broke. Now I gotta figure out what's going on along the bottom. Oh, thank goodness that didn't break. Felt like it did, but it actually just came loose. Oh, I think we're home free. Yes, absolutely no breakage. I think I need to go buy a lottery ticket. And as indicated by the big scary warning, these LCDs are backlit by fluorescent tubes and they're run by high voltage. And these things will give you a pretty good zap. I don't know if it would necessarily be lethal, but it does really suck. So just a note in case you're playing along at home, just be careful around this area. So let's go ahead and disconnect that first. Okay, now it looks like four screws and the panel's out. All right, got all those screws out, so... There's usually a flex cable on the back here. Several, actually. Yeah, there they are. Actually, it looks like this entire flex cable pops off. Wow, that was easy. Panel's out. And now the eBay hunting begins. There's definitely something to be said about all these display screws being exactly the same. I sure missed this year of laptop serviceability. All right, let's see what can be done about these scuffs. I'm gonna try this magic eraser thing, see how well that does. I've just got a little bit of Windex on that, so. Okay, well, I'd say that worked. Looks like whatever made that mark did damage the plastic a little bit, but it's not too bad. All right, well, that's looking a lot better. Correction, that port cover is actually in four pieces. So let me see if I can glue it back together. I really can't think of anything other than super glue for putting this thing back together. So let's give it a try. Well, that's as good as it's getting with old stupid glue. I guess it's better than nothing. All right, well, the replacement screen is ordered. It was actually way easier to find than I thought. So this thing's gonna have to sit around headless until that screen comes. Hopefully it gets here before I'm done shooting this video. But the system's chances of recovery are looking very good. Let's move on to the next system. All right, next system is this crusty, dusty Dell Inspiron. And honestly, it just looks like it's a bit dirty. I really don't see any broken plastic on it. Left side of the machine has two PCMCIA slots. Got all the usual audio input and output jacks. Got a firewire port there. And the hard drive lives behind this cover. We also have an IRDA transceiver here. And here we have a dial-up modem jack and a NIC. And seeing as the RJ45 jack is plugged off, I'm guessing the NIC is disabled. And we got a speaker here. And here's the front side of the machine. And interestingly enough, has an internal zip drive. That is something I've never seen on a laptop before. Really hope that thing works. And we've got our battery here. And on the right side of the machine, got an optical drive. Got our TV out port. Got the Kingston lock port. And I'm not sure what this cover is covering. And got the other speaker. We got stereo sound in this thing. And back side of the machine has plenty of I.O. options. Got USB, our serial and parallel ports, docking station port. VGA, of course. Got our combo PS2 keyboard and mouse port. Got the power input here, and two cooling fans. And here's the underside of the machine. Got a Windows ME COA sticker here. So let's go ahead and take a peek behind some of these covers. I'm gonna start with this one here because I'm not sure if it's the RAM expansion or if it's a modem or a NIC. And that looks like a dial-up modem. See, we could put a NIC in here. That's the connector for the RJ45 port, most likely. Let's just go ahead and get that cover back on. And that means our RAM expansion must live behind this cover. Let's take a look under there. Well, that cover's really stuck. There we go. All right, we got two sodium modules. And it's a Samsung stick with no indication of size or speed. Always fun. Let's get that back in there. And let's check out the other one. And that's an identical stick. Yep, everything's the same. So let's get that back in. And let's get that cover back on. 
These covers are awfully tight. All right, let's pull out that zip drive and see what its deal is. Looks like I just slide this over and pull up on this. There we go. Well, that's cool. It's actually Dell branded. Honestly, it looks like a pretty clean drive. Let's peek inside there. Yeah, it looks really clean inside. Now let's go ahead and pull out that battery. And it is a lithium battery. I wonder what are the chances that it takes a charge. Already got lucky once with the Toshiba. Maybe we'll get lucky again. It's got a little indicator here. And it is, of course, completely dead. No surprise there. Connector looks pretty clean. And staring down the drive bay, it actually looks pretty clean in there too. See, this machine can actually take two batteries. Also looking pretty clean in the battery bay. Looks like we just have some dust. All right, let's check out that hard drive. It's retained by this cover here, a single screw in the front. And then it slides towards the bottom about a quarter of the way, if I remember correctly. And at that point, you can just pull the drive out. And there you can see the IRDA transceiver. And got a 10 gigabyte IBM Travel Star, manufactured June 2001. I've had pretty good luck with the Travel Stars, so we'll see if it works. It's a nice contrast to the Desk Star drives, otherwise known as the Death Star drives. So let's actually get this back in there. All right, let's check out that optical drive. If I remember correctly, it's retained by just this single screw. And this screw stays with the laptop. And once that's loose, pull on this little tab here, and that pulls the drive out. And it's a TAC drive. Got a manufacture date of March 2001. Got some info on this side. I'm guessing this is a CD-ROM only because I don't see anything about DVDs on it. Let's just get that back in there. And let's get that zip drive and battery back in. All right, let's open this thing up. Pretty rugged looking laptop there. And we are badged as an Intel Pentium 3, designed for Windows 2000 Professional and Windows ME. And we got the trackpad and the track point, with separate buttons for each. And that track point nub has plenty of grip left. You can tell it was very seldom used. Got some media control buttons here, and I'm guessing these have alternate functions too, seeing as they got the little Dell E on that. And the LCD does look intact, but it sure is dusty. Let's just go ahead and de-dust that real quick with a microfiber cloth. I'll give it a proper cleaning if it works. Okay, now I have to find a power supply for this thing. And that could get tricky because this thing does not use a barrel style connector. If there's one type of thing that I will never not hoard, it is definitely power supplies. That looks like the one. My power supply hoarding compulsion is reinforced. All right, nothing left to do but to try to power this thing up. So here comes power. It's making some very strange sounds. Let's go ahead and turn that off. All right, I went ahead and removed the battery. So let's try giving it power again. Let's see what it does. And posts, awesome. And it sounds like that hard drive initialized. And we got complaints. That message is awfully tiny. Let me move you a little closer. And no surprise, probably has a bad CMOS battery. Let's see if we can just continue. And it's booting Windows ME. I wonder why the display is so tiny. That might be a BIOS setting. Okay, we got an account on there. Let's see if we can just... Ooh, what is this? Missing the necessary root certificate. Okay. Let's see if we can just bypass this. Uh, maybe not. Seems like we're not responding. And the CPU fan is kicked on. Hmm. Yeah, that thing's running pretty warm. I'm gonna try power cycling it. Maybe it needs to run setup. Okay, well I don't see any showstoppers in here. You can see we have 256 megs of RAM. Got an ATI M4 GPU with 16 megs of video memory. Let's see, let's go to the next page. Looking for display settings. Let's see if we can get a verbose post. Oh, that sounds good. Let's enable the IRDA port. Let's put it on COM2. Okay, obviously we have no batteries installed. And all that looks good. Okay, I guess we're done here. Let's save and exit. Let's see if we get any further. All right, yeah, I had an improper shutdown. Gotta go through scan disk. What is this? I think Zone Labs is a firewall or something. Go away. I'm just gonna let ScanDisk do its thing. Oh god, it's got McAfee on it. 
All right, no complaints from ScanDisk. Let's try getting in again. Oh, there we go. Oh no, not the Win9X hardware information database. And detected the infrared unit. Lord, if I knew I had to go through all this, I would have never enabled the infrared port. And got a reboot. Of course. All right, we are in. This thing's got a lot of stuff on it. This was definitely a business machine. So we got a VPN client there. And that trackpad's not super responsive. I'm just gonna use the track point for now. Oh, never mind. Track point's doing the same thing. That must just be a Windows ME stutter. All right, let's see what this thing has on it. So we've got an ancient version of SpyBot. SpyBot Search and Destroy. That used to be my go-to for removing spyware. Got Spy Sweeper as well on here. Somebody wanted to be completely sure they weren't being spied on. Speaking of spying, let's see if there's any documents on this thing. Oh yeah, this thing is loaded with documents. Well, this thing's definitely got to be wiped. Let's just get out of there. See what other programs are on here. Not a whole lot, just a bunch of security software. You know, I didn't hear the Windows startup sound. Do we have sound? Hmm, I think they just have the sound scheme disabled. Let's do Windows default. Don't care. Oh, there's some sound. Sounds pretty awful. We gotta hear the Windows startup sound. Well, it put forth an effort. <laughs> Man, this thing's running terribly. Let's see what our disk space situation is like. And yeah, we're about half full. Heh, just like the previous system. Local disk D, I guess there's another partition on there. Probably a recovery partition. Ooh, what is that? Okay, maybe not. All right, let's test out that zip drive. Okay, it spins up. I'm guessing it's F drive. And it works! Awesome! Well, let's just copy old Doom 1 over. And it's copying! Alright, that worked! Let's see if it ejects as violently as the external drive. Well, not quite. Still a little bit forceful. Alright, let's try the CD drive. Yeah, it spins up. Looks like it's maybe auto running. Every time this system is doing anything, the mouse becomes really unresponsive. Good old Windows ME. I'm guessing that's our AOL launcher struggling to load? What in the world is that? Oh, <laughs> I guess they took that Lord of the Rings thing pretty seriously. All right, well, clearly that CD drive works. Sounds like it's trying to play sound. Doesn't sound like it's getting far. Okay, let's not continue with this. I don't think the system can handle anything else being installed on it. But you know what? I want to shut this thing down and try that battery again. All right, got the battery back in. Here comes power. Okay, well, it's not making that strange sound anymore. I do have some pretty erratic blinking on the battery indicator light. Let's turn it on and see what that BIOS health indicator has anything to say. Okay, well, that's definitely a lie. Apparently, we have a full charge. I'm just going to play around with this thing for a while and see if that battery takes a charge. Got my fire extinguisher right here. Okay, well the battery indicator started flashing amber, so I'm guessing that means the system has determined that battery's dead. Although Windows seems to think it's trying the charge. This ain't no Toshiba battery. So I actually have several of these Dell Inspiron laptops that I received as part of the e-waste haul. And as such, I have several batteries. And amazingly, this one's little charge indicator seems to indicate that it has some life left. So let's see if it'll boot the system. Alright, the battery's in, power supply is disconnected, so let's see what it does. And <laughs> it turns on! Let's get into that BIOS battery indicator thing. Alright, looks like we got some life. Let's see if it'll boot up to Windows. Looks like it's dropping pretty fast. Alright, made it to the login screen. And already got a low battery warning. <laughs> and we're down to 4% already. Let's actually not let that die completely. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in. I wanna see if it charges. Okay, weirdly enough, it's not recognizing that I've connected the power. Maybe that connection's a little hoopa jooped. Hmm, nope. That's weird. Let me shut it down while I still can. Power supply is definitely on. Okay, I shut the machine down and booted it back up without the battery. And I went ahead and put the battery back in after Windows booted, and allegedly, we're charging. So let's see how far we get. Okay, so I stepped inside to see what the cat was complaining about and came back out to a dead laptop. Power supply is definitely still on. Let's see if it'll turn back on. 
Okay. Not sure what its deal is. Okay, battery is critically low. We should be on AC power. Maybe this thing isn't actually running on AC power. And yeah, we're showing as unplugged again. What is up with this thing? I was sure this power supply is good. And now we're completely dead. Let me go see if I can find another one of these power supplies. And the power supply horde provides. This one fired right up with no issues. I got the battery back in there to see if it'll charge. Okay, allegedly we're charging. All right, well, power seems stable now, and we've made it up to almost 40%, so... While this thing charges, I'm gonna go ahead and run ScanDisk and see how healthy that hard drive is. ScanDisk inside Windows is just not the same. Okay, so I had to restart into safe mode because something kept interrupting ScanDisk, and all I get is this teeny tiny little desktop. Let's see if the ScanDisk window even fits in this. It's running a lot faster in safe mode. And ScanDisk keeps getting interrupted even in safe mode, so... I'm just gonna call it good. Nothing about that hard drive is making me suspect it's unhealthy anyway. Alright, well that battery did reach 100% charge, and didn't even have to contact my homeowner's insurance. I also popped in one of the other batteries in the left bay, and it charged up too. Though weirdly enough, it won't charge past 99%. So I'm just gonna go ahead and doom this thing to death, and see how long I can play on both batteries. So for the specs of this machine, it's definitely more appropriate to put something like Half-Life on it. But the problem is, this OS is running so poorly that I don't think it would run well at all. I'm definitely going to put something like Windows 2000 or even Windows XP on it. But for now, Doom it is. So let's go ahead and disconnect power. Alright, we are on battery power. Oh, and Doom sounds terrible on this thing. I could only get music working with a uh, general MIDI or a sound canvas. None of the other options are working. And it just sounds comically bad. Let's see how far I get. Okay, well, I already beat the game, and we're still alive. So let's see how much battery power we're left with now. So here's where we're at. See, we still have plenty of battery power left. So I'm gonna have to find another game to play. Okay, well, why not play Doom 2? Okay, well, we're about an hour in. And I've got to go edit some video, so I figure I'll just leave it on god mode and let these imps bat me around and keep an eye on it and then note the time of death. Okay, in total we're about an hour and a half in, and this thing seems to be generating NFTs. I don't know what's going on here, but it is... Okay, now it's back. That's very strange. So I disabled the screensaver specifically to prevent interruption. Let's actually go down the windows and see what our battery percentages are. We're almost there. Oh, I think that's it. Got an hour and 32 minutes of gameplay out of those batteries. All right, let's go ahead and clean this thing up. This machine's definitely earned it. Yeah, pretty dirty. All right, that looks a lot better. All right, well this thing cleaned up really well, and it actually turned out to be a pretty nice little system. I can't find a single thing wrong with it. I'm gonna go ahead and let those batteries charge back up, and I'll probably swap in some of those other batteries to see if they'll charge. But for now, let's move on to the next system. All right, how could I possibly have a laptop video without an IBM ThinkPad? Got an adorable little ThinkPad 560E here. Top side of the machine's not too bad. Got some scratches here, but it looks like most of this might clean off. On the left side of the machine, we have our headphone jack here. Got a microphone port and our volume control here. Got two PCMCIA slots. And actually, we have a PCMCIA something in there. Looks like either a dial-up modem, a NIC, or both. Let's actually pop that out of there and see what it is. Now this little button here folds over to get out of the way, but this is how you eject the PCMCIA cards. Just fold that out and then push it in. And it is a combination dial-up modem and NIC. And these are cool. These PCMCIA dial-up modems have a jack built in. You just press in and it pops out like that. Man, that brings back memories. And for the RJ45 port, it does require a dongle, which has of course been lost to time. I probably have about zero chance of finding one of those. Let's just get that back in there for now. And not much going on at the front of the machine. Got our display latch release button here. And it looks like this might be an infrared port. ThinkPads usually have multiple infrared ports, so I wouldn't be surprised. And on the right side of the machine, we have a port cover, which probably has the floppy drive port behind it. Yep, sure does. I'm very lucky that little port cover is not broken. And we got the power button here, which looks like it also doubles as an infrared port. See, we got the infrared icon there. Yeah, the power switch and the infrared window are one unit. 
<laughs> and on the back side of the machine, pretty standard complement of ports. So you unfortunately have some damage here. We've also got some damage on both corners. Looks like the back panel of the display is actually broken. And that's unfortunate. And here's the underside of the machine, designed for Windows 95. Got a docking station port here. And I'm guessing this is a memory expansion cover. So let's see what's behind there. And indeed it is. And we see it takes a CR1220 battery. Highly doubt that battery is any good. And I definitely don't have any of those. So I may have to do some temporary hackulation in order to get this thing to boot. Let's just get that cover back on for now. And here's hopefully a good shot of that label. It's kind of hard to get it in frame. All right, let's check out that battery. Looks like I just slide this release tab and push up, maybe. It's pretty tight in there. There we go. And it's a lithium battery. Hopefully it takes a charge. Let's just get it back in there. Now I don't see any way to access the hard drive. It's most likely beneath the palm rest. So I'm just gonna leave it alone for now. I'll only pull it out if it has a problem. All right, let's open this thing up. And luckily the LCD doesn't look cracked. And that track point nub looks pretty well used. There is no stiction left whatsoever on that thing. Mouse buttons are plenty clicky. And as ThinkPads often do, it actually has a really nice keyboard. Got our screen brightness control here. All right, let's power this thing up. One little problem though, the power supply hoard is failing me. I do not have an appropriate power supply for this thing. And the compulsion is furthered. So what to do when you don't have the correct power supply? Make a power supply. See, we just have a regular old barrel style connector here. And luckily it does indicate the polarity. See, we're center positive. Now, if it didn't have that polarity indicator, just take a continuity meter and check for continuity between that side wiper and the ground. You can tap ground just about anywhere there is metal shielding. I don't know of any laptop in existence that is positive ground. So if you find one, you need to return that thing back to the galaxy from which it came. So now all I have to do is find a power supply at that voltage and current, and then I need to find a barrel connector that fits in there. And this one seems pretty close, so... Well, it's just a tiny bit loose, but feels like it's connected. Okay, I could not find the power supply with that voltage. So, I hacked together this abomination. These are just three 5 volt power supplies wired in series, and that should get us close enough to 16 volts. Now I have to implore you, do not try this at home, for reasons that should be perfectly obvious. I highly doubt your life insurance policy covers stuff like this. Alright, we're at 15.6 volts, which is close enough. And rest assured that once I received the correct power supply for this laptop, I'm sending this thing back to the depths of hell from which it came. All right, I triple checked the polarity on the barrel connector, and we are good. So let's see if we can send this laptop to a low Earth orbit. Here comes power. Okay, no voltage drop so far. Let's see if it powers on. And it does. <laughs> so we got... Oh, we are angry. 161 and 163. I'm pretty sure one of those means a bad CMOS battery. Does it have the Flappy Bird mouse cursor? <laughs> yes, it does. Ah, uh, IBM didn't have to, but they did. Let's see how far we get. Eh, 2014's as good a year as any. Let's see if it boots. Are you really? Let's try canceling. Yes, I know. You should still boot, though. It does sound like the hard drive initialized, though. Okay, we may not be getting past these errors. Maybe if I just change it slightly. That's light enough? Nope. All right, well, I'm gonna have to fix this. But hey, at least our demon power supply works. Okay, well, I don't have any CR1220s, but I do have a CR1225, and it fits. So let's see what this thing does now. Okay, now we have a 173. Let's see if that goes away when I set the clock. That's a weird way to increment the year. Let's see if it likes that. Aha! That's looking better. And we got 16 megs of RAM, and got Windows 95 on it. Awesome! That thing's booting! Yeah, the hard drive sounds great. What on earth was- Oh, that's the PCMCIA sound! Wow, I forgot about that! Well, that just knocked the dust off some decades-old brain cells. <laughs> Alright, we're at the login screen! Alright, we should be able to get through that, just by hitting cancel. 
Oh, this thing has more than just PC speaker sounds. Oh, this thing is loaded with documents. All right, let's get some info on this thing. Let's see, we got a two gigabyte hard drive. Oh, this thing has a weird sound scheme. Getting pretty full. Let's try to get some hardware info. And it is a Pentium system. Let's see what kind of sound card we have. ESS audio drive. Let's see what kind of display adapter. Got a Cyber 9320. Netscape Navigator. Oh no, it's been conquered by Internet Explorer. Oh wow. <laughs> I haven't seen that in forever. Oh <laughs> wow. Good old Netscape. Let's see, it looks pretty unused. Not many bookmarks. Let's see what else it's got on here. This thing looks like it was all business. All right, well, let's drop down the DOS mode and do scan disk. Oh, what is this? You don't have a drive A. Good old Norton, always looking out. All right. And we got file system issues. Fix it. Skip undo. Fix it. Keep fixing it. Oh, you know what? I should have passed the auto fix parameter. Yeah, you know what? Let's do that. Okay, let's do a surface scan. Oh, I think we're gonna win. Yes, no bad sectors. All right, well, apart from some file system weirdness, this hard drive is perfectly healthy. Well, it doesn't look like the battery is charging, just based on the lights not being lit. But let's try to pull power and see what it does. Yep, straight to dead. Well, I guess we couldn't get lucky with this battery. I just love the brightness controls on these old laptops. <laughs> it's merely a suggestion. Okay, so I decided to open up Outlook and just created about 30 minutes worth of blurring for myself. But I can see this thing was probably used up until the middle of the year 2000. Okay, so at enormous risk to life and limb, and in the face of the threat of homelessness, I left this thing plugged in unattended for a few hours, and something absolutely amazing happened. The battery took a charge. <laughs> I cannot believe it. Look, no tricks. Same battery. <laughs> Those 90s lithium cells are tougher than I thought. Well, let's see how much charge it thinks it has. 2.8 hours. <laughs> I don't think I believe that. Well, it doesn't give me a percentage. I guess I have to plug it in for that. So let me plug it back in. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it claims to be almost fully charged. Now, I still have no way to get data on and off of this thing without fiddling with the serial port. But I really want to get a game on this thing and see how long it lasts. But currently, my only way to do that is to pull the hard drive out and connect it to my IDE to USB adapter. But you know what? Now I'm interested. I have to pull that drive out of there anyway, because this thing is absolutely loaded with sensitive info. And that's the reason for all that blurring you saw earlier. You know what? Let's do that. Okay, that was less terrifying than I thought. That keyboard bezel actually came off pretty easily. And there is the hard drive. Looks like I just got one screw left. It looks like this just lifts out of there. Let's get that flex cable disconnected. Hmm, seemed to have lost a little bit of ballast. But there it is. IBM 2.1 gigabyte drive, the manufacture date of April 1997. Let's get this thing connected to the bench PC. All right, I copied over the dooms and the driver for the zip drive, and I just wanna make sure everything's all good before I put the keyboard bezel back on. So let's see. And yep, we're all good. Let's put this thing back together and play some Doom. All right, here we go. Coming unplugged. Hey, we've got Sound Blaster emulation. Sounds way better than the Dell laptop. Uh-oh. Are we done already? Looks like it. Well, that didn't take long. Yep, I went to standby mode. All right, let's plug it back in. There we go. All right, let's get out of this. And it still claims to have 99% charge. All right, that's enough necromancing that battery. Let's give this thing the cleanup it so richly deserves. So luckily this thing's not covered in that rubbery coating that some ThinkPads have on them. My 760E has that, and it's starting to get a little sticky. Well, it's not terribly dirty. Okay, well, it looks a little better at least. All right, well, that's not looking too bad. The LCD and the keyboard cleaned up nicely. All right, well, this machine definitely surprised me. 
I gotta admit, I didn't have high hopes for this one, but this one is absolutely a keeper. I definitely have quite the appreciation for 90s ThinkPads. This is definitely a nice one. And it is so unbelievably compact. Like, I can't believe it's a 90s laptop. Just look at it next to my comparatively chonky 760E. And that thing is super cool. I gotta show that off a little bit. I've had this machine for about a year now. It, of course, works perfectly. It's got a fully functional optical drive here. And the original battery still gives me about an hour of gaming. And this is the coolest feature I've ever seen on a laptop. Not only is the keyboard height adjustable, if you tilt the screen all the way back, as far as it'll go, and push the screen release latches in their opposite direction, in this case forward, you pop the hood, and there's your drives and battery. Sure wish more laptops had this ease of serviceability. I used to have one of these machines back in the early 2000s, and I am definitely proud to own one again. And for some mysterious reason, these mouse buttons have quite a strange feature. You can actually lock them in their clicked position by sliding them back. Isn't that the weirdest thing? And of course they both do that. Quite a unique little machine. All right, well, unfortunately, the LCD for the satellite is definitely not going to be here in time. My original order actually got mysteriously refunded, so I'm guessing they had some problem with the stock. However, I do have shipping confirmation for the second order, and it should be here Saturday. So not in time for the video, unfortunately. And I've also got a proper power supply ordered for this little guy. And I still don't have any leads for a replacement CD drive for this satellite, but I will keep looking. But once all that's squared away, we should have three happy, healthy laptops. And I'd like to take a moment to thank everyone who's subscribed and pledged their support on Patreon. Your support is definitely helping to keep me going. And if you're new to the channel and this is your thing, good news, it's my thing too. I would certainly appreciate it if you considered subscribing. I'm usually doing desktops, but I have a lot of laptops to go through as well. But that's all for this video. Thanks for watching.